Since about two months, I got this photo as the home screen on my computer. Looking at it always cheers me up. So I decided to turn the photo into a painting. No alterations, just copying the photo as it is. The main problem I was facing was how to incorporate the railing into the painting. I came up with what I thought was a pretty smart move, but I have no idea if it will actually work. It goes like this. I first do the railing and the flag with black acrylic and then paint the background on top of it, hoping it will remain visible enough to add color to it later on. Whoops, now the flag seems to have disappeared. I'm hoping I can maybe get it back with the stipple brush. It's visible, but hardly. I do need my rag to help me out here. Though I used quite a lot of liquid in the color of the sea, the railing all but disappears, so I'll need the stipper and the rag once more. So far, so good. The acrylic underpainting works well, though I'm not sure if in the end it's worth the extra work. With a mixture of Prussian blue, Scheveningen blue and a lot of liquid, I paint a second layer of the sea. More to the left I add indigo to darken the color. The farther from the sun, the darker the color. Fortunately, this time the acrylic underpainting remains clearly visible. Here's the handle in rag technique again. To paint the foam trail behind the ferry, I use a mixture of schevening in yellow light and violet gray. This time too, I add quite a bit of liquid to make sure the blue of the sea continues to shine through.
More and more I'm finding out how extremely useful my rag is when painting these kinds of irregular structures. Because I started with a mid-tone, similar to what I do when painting clouds, it's quite easy to bring some light into the foam by adding a lighter color, in this case Old Holland Yellow Light. I've been postponing the railing, but I'm afraid I can't get around it any longer. It's such an important part of the painting, it has an impact on everything else. First thing tomorrow. I'm using a synthetic flat top brush here. With the sharp end of the brush, it's easy to do the outlines of the railing. Not my favorite part of the painting. When I studied the reference photo up close, I saw something I didn't expect. It seems like the railing has a dark outline. Ok, let's start with that. A double zero brush and a mixture of Prussian blue and indigo with a lot of liquid to make it flow easily. Then apply a second layer of a brilliant yellow and sepia mix. More white for the top of the railing. And this time it's not the thumb but the pinky finger to smoothen the transitions. If I pick up some of the dark blue outline in the movement, that's okay. It'll make the railing less of a cut out shape. Slowly I build up the contrasts within the railing, while trying to maintain the smooth gradients. With a mix of brilliant yellow and cadmium yellow, I paint the light that is reflected from the water onto the bottom of the railing. You may have noticed I left out a part of the railing. I would have liked to say that I did it on purpose, to be able to compare it with the black acrylic underpainting, but the truth is I overlooked it. Still, it does enable me to compare the two approaches. Zooming in, you can see the texture of the water in the railing. It is also a bit more difficult to get a tight shape. With a mix of Scheveningen and blue, indigo and titanium white, I'm going to try to bring some more light into the waves. In addition, I want to emphasize the continuity of the sea behind the railing. The light accents can be very helpful in getting that done. The very last step is to paint the highlights on the railing. 
The different parts are welded together and that's where the railing is the lightest. Again, I use undiluted yellow light and a double zero Kolinsky brush. The purpose of the experiment with the black underpainting of the railing was to find out how helpful it would be as a guide and if it would make it easier to create the illusion of the sea continuing behind it. In short, as far as I'm concerned, it's a quite useful method to paint these kind of shapes and integrate them into your painting. 